Tuesday, October 27th, 2016, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I like to talk about the uh, average uh, London house price uh, and the average price of gold and sterling. So I'm going to be looking at the, uh, the ratio between the average London house price and the average price of gold going back to 1973 to the present day. And the reason I'm doing that is because I believe that gold and silver as well to some extent are the currencies or the money with the best track record for the last 5,000 years. And gold uh, maintains its purchasing power. It might, uh, you know, go up and down sharply in terms of fiat money, but over time, uh, it maintains its purchasing, purchasing power. Uh, an ounce of gold during Roman times, for example, could buy you a very good quality toga and sandals. And normally, an ounce of gold now should buy someone a, a tailored suit uh, and a nice pair of brogues, leather brogues or leather shoes in, in London. And that would be way over 2,000 pounds, more like 5,000 pounds, I would say. So, yeah, the reason I'm doing this is also because a lot of viewers say, oh, uh, should I uh, be buying gold? Uh, I think it's overvalued. And just to let you know, this is I'm not giving people advice here uh, whether they should buy gold or not. I'm just giving the information. So basically, I, I've taken uh, data from Nationwide uh, Building Society, which is the largest UK, well, world building society in the world, and it's 160 years old. So they have data going back uh, many years. And I've taken... Uh, the average uh, sterling gold price from the LBMA data from the LBMA website. So I've gone back to 1973, and there's two. Um, you will see in the chart. Uh, well, I'll, I'll bring up the chart now. So as you can see in the chart, uh, uh, from 1973 to roughly 1996. That ratio was fairly uh, steady. We did trade up quite a bit since uh, the early 80s, and then we came back down back around 1994, and we stayed up, uh, stabilized. And all of a sudden, there in 1997, it starts shooting higher. Uh, the nationwide average London house price to LBMA average sterling gold price ratio. So that that means that that meant that from 1997 to 2004, um, gold became very undervalued in terms of uh, uh, London houses. You needed uh, at the top of the market, well, at the top of the ratio in 2004, you needed uh, 1,030 ounces of gold to buy the average uh, London price. And just for uh, curiosity, just to let you know. Like uh, the London average London house price in 1973 was 12,850 pounds. Uh, right now, 2016, that's the uh, third quarter uh, numbers. Uh, the average house price is 475,000. And just, you know, at the top, at the peak of house prices in 2007, uh, they, they were 303,000. So we... Uh, this bubble from uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, the housing bubble did collapse, but they've tried to reinflate it. Uh, and you can see they, they've done it. Uh, you can see through this uh, ratio chart here uh, that uh, they've tried desperately to reinflate it. Uh, the ratio got back up to, uh, let's see, 641 uh, last year. Uh, that's how many ounces you needed uh, to buy the average UK house price. Uh, but now the ratio is dropped because the price of gold has gone up basically from 700, uh, low 700s to, to 1,000. So right now the ratio is at 470. So personally, I think this chart shows that uh, the period from you know, basically the mid 90s up until last year is an aberration. I know we had the correction, 
since basically uh, the great financial crisis, we corrected all the way down to uh, 281.7 on the ratio in 2011. But I think we could go lower on that ratio. And uh, will that mean uh, higher gold prices or higher, higher house prices? Will gold go up quicker or will gold go down quicker than house prices? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's difficult to say. Personally, I just think that holding gold uh, will, no matter, uh, you know, I think holding gold will be a good investment in terms of uh, relative to, to holding real estate in the UK in the next few years. I think uh, this bubble uh, that we saw, you know, from 1997 basically to, to maybe even to last year, if you want to consider it, that that's gonna end the financial engineering uh, cannot go on and things will revert to normal and they might even even undershoot on the downside because the low for the London house price uh, to gold ratio was 120 in 1980 so who knows we could go back to 120 we could even go back to a hundred who knows and if we go back to 100 and house prices remain pretty much where they are at 470,000, uh, we could see gold at 4,700 uh, pounds uh, an ounce. Uh, or if we go back to the average, because I've looked also at the average from 1973 to 1996, the average uh, ratio uh, was 248 ounces that you needed to buy the average London house price. If we go back to that level and we stay where we are, around 475,000, that would be 1,900, uh, 1900 pound gold. So it's interesting. Uh, so yeah, difficult to say whether, where the ratio, where the prices are gonna be, but I think the ratio has got further down to go. Uh, the uh, you know, a lot of people in the UK, uh, the mainstream economists and politicians and the mainstream media, they actually come out and say that there's a housing shortage in the UK. <laughs> you know, that there are millions of people who don't have a house. But I'm sorry, you know, it's a, a fallacy to say that there's a shortage because there's not you know, millions of people in, in the streets and in, in the UK. They're in houses. What the, what the problem is in the UK is that the uh, Bank of England uh, has, you know, uh, run this artificial monetary policy to keep rates at zero and print money. And that's, uh, that's made investors and people who have savings take that money and buy properties uh, or real estate so they could rent it and get some kind of income because if they leave the money in the bank, well, first of all, the bank might go bust, so you might lose your money. Second of all, you're getting you know zero interest in the bank. So we've never had more people renting. I think there's 11 million uh, people who live in, in rented accommodation in the UK. So this thing about when the Bank of England and... You know, politicians and uh, economists come out, oh, we have a housing shortage, shortage. we need to build, build more houses in the UK. I think that's totally if, uh, a total fallacy. Uh, we have enough uh, properties. It's just that the ownership has been shifted uh, towards, the, uh, towards investors uh, because they can't put their money anywhere. Uh, that's safe except houses well they should be putting some in gold and that's that's how I see it and uh, yeah if uh, the UK uh, monetary authorities and the government didn't encourage you know the reason why they've done this as well is because the balance sheets of the banks uh, the you know uh, their a, a lot of their assets are, I think, housing based. I think about two thirds of uh, banking assets are related to mortgages and uh, housing loans. So, uh, yeah, the government says there's enough housing. There's not enough housing, but the reason they're keeping 
uh, rates low and, and the house prices uh, pumped up uh, is uh, to keep the banks uh, solvent. And what that does, the unintended consequence, is that uh, it drives out, you know, young people who are just starting out their working careers. They can't afford to buy the houses because they're too expensive. So they have to rent. So there's no housing shortage. If there was really physical shortage of houses in the UK, there would be millions of people living in tents in the UK, and they're not. What we have is an artificially low interest rate that encourages uh, investors and savers to put their money into property. And that crowds out the younger people or the people on lower incomes. And it, so the best solution to the UK housing crisis is really lower prices of houses. So how we're going to, and I think when that happens or if they inflate the system, uh, but then wages would have to go up. I do see this ratio uh, of, uh, you know, how many ounces of gold you need to buy an average London price. I see that coming down and it will signify uh, a correction because gold is real. Uh, the London house price is not real. It's not based on reality. It's based on... Uh, you know, fraudulent uh, extremist monetary policy uh, by the central bank and by the government as well. They're involved in it as well, because if uh, the government wasn't involved, they wouldn't have appointed Mark Carney, who uh, <laughs> the, the governor of the Bank of England, who told Lord Lamont this week in the House of Lords, there was a committee hearing and uh, Governor Carney was asked by Lord Lamont, who was Chancellor of the Exchequer in 1992 when we had the, the big uh, sterling ERM crisis. And he, Lord Lamont was actually quite honest. He said, you know, this policy of zero rates and QE, that's inflating a, a, a bond bubble. Uh, don't you think that's, uh, you know, that's a disaster waiting to happen? Don't you think it's dangerous? And basically, Mark Carney just fobbed him off, said, no, no, it's... Uh, QE has got nothing to do with the reason why interest rates are low. Yeah, right, Mr. Carney. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. The uh, gold, uh, you know, the average London house price to gold ratio. And, um, yeah, I think we're going to fall back to reality. So I, I see that ratio uh, definitely going towards uh, below you know, 300, 200, uh, back to towards 200. So right now we are at 470. So I don't think, uh, I think uh, gold is a good investment relative to, to housing. I'm not saying you should sell your house and buy gold because you got to live somewhere. But if you have your house paid for and you live there and you have extra savings, it could be, you know, in, in, in pounds, it could be interesting to have some gold. So uh, that's, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, share it uh, with friends, families, colleagues. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. If you'd like to donate, there's some links uh, below in the description. Uh, take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.